this is Tim Taylor. Um, just want to give you a quick update before we go to church uh, about what's happening this past week, uh, specifically with regards to our orphanage over in Myanmar. But before I go there, I wanted to let you know that I'm working on a number of projects right now. Uh, one for leaders, another one I'm working on is an article regarding the uh, censorship czars or the uh, propaganda police, whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to working on an article to illustrate some things about the lies, deceit, the Antichrist spirit that is at work in our world today. Um, anyway, I'm working on that right now. I just had some things happen this morning with where I've been censored some more and all that kind of stuff. And I'm marveling at what they did for their fake checkers, or excuse me, their fact checkers, excuse me, uh, where they get their sources and all that kind of stuff. And I want to illustrate some things to you about how they do this, what they do, and how they control the narrative. And it's a, it's a, it, they create a foe, a false moral high ground. And I want to illustrate that for you. But I need to actually give you a report on what's happening with regards to, um, uh, our orphanage and, um, John Mark and the folks in uh, Burma. And that is, uh, last, uh, last week and a half, two weeks, uh, virtually all of them came down with the Omicron, Omicron uh, the virus. And so, obviously, that was very difficult, very hard. Uh, but praise God, they're coming out of that. Uh, they got sick. Uh, no one died. Um, but um, anyway, I won't go into that anymore, except to say they're coming out. Praise God. Uh, they're getting better. That being said, I ran into a challenge this uh, past two weeks that I wanted to share with you. That again, I would submit to you illustrates the Antichrist spirit at work in our world today. And this is actually from uh, Western Union. And that was one of the tools we were using because the offices, the military uh, junta, junta, they shut down the banking, everything like that. They were trying to do everything, control money supply, control the narrative. Uh, early in the conflict, when they stole the country from the uh, duly elected civilian government in February 2020, um, they, um, um, uh, they went about to specifically to target pastors. Um, I remember getting a call in April, 2020 from, uh, John Mark, and we had a conversation on the phone. They were actually at that time, they were not in the orphanage. They had fled to the country. Uh, one of the things going on was they specifically, the Junta was specifically targeting pastors. Why? Because pastors, uh, had been playing a ministers, Christian ministers had been playing a role in the peace protest. And, um, and if they couldn't find the ministers, they would go arrest the wives and or the children to force them into compliance. And so there were many ministers that chose to leave the country. Now, John Mark and his family, it's on that call. He said, we, we, we've chosen to stay and serve. And so they did. And so in the process of working through this, as you know, uh, the, the, or the, uh, prayer center, Mount Horb prayer center got bombed. The village next to it got bombed. That's where many of their families lived. And, uh, so their families were made refugees basically. And they showed up on the doorstep with nothing, literally nothing, uh, from their homes because the bombing burned their houses, that kind of thing. They had nothing. And so, uh, through your generous help, we've managed to help them have a place to stay. Uh, and this is, again, this is their family and extended family that showed up the orphanage. Basically, the orphanage tripled in size in one day. Anyway, you've helped them uh, set up house, uh, take care of themselves, reclothe them, feed them. Um, and we've managed to get uh, probably 75% of all the resources to them thus far. But I ran into a problem with the last resources, and that was we they asked us to use Western Union because there was an office that opened there several months ago. Uh, they had been shut down for many months. Anyway, um, I got this response as I tried to send the last monies. Uh, it says, Western Union must comply with legal and regulatory requirements in countries in which we do business. Part of complying with these requirements involves performing due diligence to determine how our customers are using our services to ensure Western Union is meeting obligations, its obligations. In addition, money unions, Western Union's money transfer service terms and condition gives uh, Western Union and its agents the right to refuse service to any person. We reviewed the information you provided and regret to inform you that Western Union will not continue to provide you with our money service ser uh, transfer services, nor will we accept any future money transfers from you as a sender or a receiver. 
I hope you understand that sometimes we have to make these difficult decisions in order to comply with the law. On behalf of Western Union, we apologize for the any inconvenience. You know, I've actually got this before, once before, some years back, when we were actually helping build a church in India. <laughs> and the same thing occurred. And uh, so anyway, um, because they requested, I again set up a Western Union account, began to do this, and then behold, this occurs again. And so I replied back to them, and I wanted to share with you uh, what they said, what I said. First, I said, no, I don't understand. We're sending monies to an orphanage we've worked with since 2016. The family who founded it, I've known since 2006, and for the sake, for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And families have been made refugees in the military junta who executed the coup to control this country, nation in February of last year. There have been over a thousand who've been reported killed by this junta, and recently they murdered an 80-year-old woman who worked in our prayer center, and their father and grandmother, one of the teachers who worked for our, at our orphanage. They burned his body. So no, I don't understand. You reference no specific law. What law are you referring to? Whose law are you referring to? You're treating me like a criminal for doing humanitarian work. We're literally taking care of widows and orphans. The Bible calls that pure religion, so on and so forth. Their response, we get to inform you that according to our internal policy and local regula regulations, we cannot disclose any specific details why your service has been discontinued. So just so you know, that's occurred. You put this in the context of what's happening in our nation, and I would add in there the censorship, the propaganda police, and all the things they're trying to do to control the narrative. I would add in the persecution that's coming, like in India and, and uh, Burma, for example, against the Christians, uh, against that message, uh, against Jesus. And um, you just got to put that all in context. That's just part of the time we live in. Now, fortunately, I still have, uh, we have one way still to get resources in, which I won't mention. Uh, but suffice to say, we we have got them taken care of through March. So we have enough resources for March. But after March, we have no more resources. So if you feel so led, uh, at this time, we still have a way to get the resources in. So it, the budget right now is 1500 a month for the 60 um, plus folks that were taken care of with the orphanage and uh, John Mark's family. I would encourage you all to pray and obey about that. But the main thing I was pointing out here was giving you a report on that, while at the same time I wanted to make you aware of the condition of society that we live in, because I would submit to you, this is all part of an anti-Christ spirit, an anti-anointing spirit that is at work today in our media, in our financial institutions. I mean, you look what just happened in Canada with what they did with the truckers and things like that and how a civil government basically took, took control of the monetary system and said, no, you can't give to these folks if you want to. You can't, right? They did some uh, crazy stuff. And we got to begin to get wise. We need to get um, wisdom on not only how to pray, but also what to do. And so I'm working on some things like that. Anyway, I want to give you a brief update. Uh, I'm very grateful for each of you. I pray the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, give you peace. And listen, in this place right now, we're in a time of there's wars and rumors of wars, right? Crazy stuff going on with Russia, China, and Ukraine, and Taiwan. And it's only going to continue. And there's many other conflicts going on. There's crazy things happening in our nations with regards, but it's all going back to an antichrist spirit, which one of the uh, um, uh, evidences of that antichrist spirit is lawlessness. And when lawmakers start doing things that are law breaking, they are committing lawlessness. And guess what happens when you sow a seed of lawlessness? Whenever you plant a seed, it produces more seeds that produces more harvest that and so that's kind of the season we're living in. But I'm telling you right now, my friends, there is a remnant church arising. There is the true arising in the midst of this. While dark's getting darker, light's getting lighter. So I'm telling you what, my friends, it's one of the best times on earth to live at this time, especially for the believers who embrace the gospel of the kingdom. And so I want to tell you, it's a privilege for us to live during this time. And I pray that you and I, we would hit the mark for the assignment Christ has given each of us in Jesus' name, that Jesus might be glorified. So bless you all. We'll talk to you again soon.